In this video, we are diving into the five different types of positioning utilities in Tailwind CSS relative, absolute, fixed, sticky, and static. Each of these has its own specific use. So let's break them down and see how you can use them effectively in your projects. First up, we have relative positioning. The relative class lets you adjust an element's position relative to where it would be normally on the web page. It's like giving the element additional possibilities to slightly adjust its position by adding other set of positioning utilities like top, right, left, bottom, etc. Let me demonstrate this. So here I am in an empty HTML file. So here I'll add a div element. I will style this a bit so you can see the differences visually when I change some classes. Let's see the output. So simple, we just have a, a div element with relative text in it. We did not add any relative class yet. Let's add a relative class to this. You will still not see any differences. Let's save this. It's still the same because by itself, the relative class doesn't do much, but it sets the stage for something more powerful. Now you can add other set of positioning utilities like top, right, bottom, left, etc. And also it essentially marks this element as a reference point so that the child elements can be positioned relative to this. First, let's see how we can use the other set of positioning utilities. So now you can add top, for example, 12 points and left maybe 24 points. Let's save this. And now you can see that it's 12 points away from the top and 24 points away from the left. So that's the advantage of having the relative class. If you remove the relative class, you cannot use this top, left and other set of positioning utilities. Let's save it and you can see it went to the default position. And I also said that this essentially marks as a reference point for the child elements that leads us to our next utility called absolute. Absolute positioning comes into play when you need to position an element relative to its nearest parent that has the relative class in it. Let me show an example. So in this relative container, I'll add another child element that says absolute and add the class absolute. Now without the other top right positioning utilities, you will not see much difference. You just see the normal flow of the document. But if you add, for example, maybe right 12 and then bottom 6, you can see that this absolute element is positioned based on this relative container which has the indigo background and not to the entire screen. So you use absolute when you want to position an element relative to its particular parent that has the relative class in it. If no parent has a relative class, then it will use the topmost parent element as its reference point. So let me remove the relative here. And if I save, you can see that the absolute is not here. And because the text is white, you cannot see it, but it's in the bottom right. Let me change the text color. And you can see absolute is on the bottom right because now the reference point to this absolute element is the screen itself because we don't have any relative container here. A common practice is to use relative and absolute together which gives you precise control over where you want the element to appear. Now let's talk about fixed positioning. If you want to lock an element in a place relative to the entire viewport and not just a specific element. This is when you will use the fixed class. It remains visible all the time even when you scroll to different parts of the page. This is super useful for elements that you want to keep on the screen always like a navigation bar or a chat support button etc. Let me show that. I'll remove this div element. I'll just create a new one with just some full height so that we have some space to scroll. I'll copy this multiple times and give different backgrounds. 
and maybe at the end of the first page i'll add a fixed element i'll save this now let's see how it looks without adding the fixed class so you have the first page then you have the fixed then you have the second page then the third page now let's add the fixed and specify where you want to show this element on the page i want to show maybe top 24 and uh, left 0 let's save it and now you can see that this fixed element is on the top left now no matter on which page you are on it's always in that particular position that you gave so this is the use case of the fixed element next up is sticky positioning which is a cool mix between relative and fixed here is how it works the element acts like a relative element until you scroll to a certain point then it becomes fixed so as you scroll past it it sticks to the position you specified like the top or bottom of the viewport this is just uh, great for keeping important content in view as you scroll down the page let me explain with an example now instead of fixed i'll use the sticky and I'll use the top 12 position for this and I'll remove this. Let's see by default it looks like this. It's at the end of the first page. Now when you add sticky to that. So this is the first page and when you scroll you can see sticky is in the normal position. But when it comes to this position top 12 it just stops there. So when you scroll down again by default it is in its normal position that relative position but when it comes to a certain scroll point that is the top 12 that we gave it becomes fixed and it will stay there. Finally we have static positioning which is the default for all elements in HTML. You can't control their exact location on the screen with this static class. You usually don't even need to mention static in the code because it's already the default. However, or if you have previously applied a different positioning class, for example, maybe relative, static or fixed or sticky, whatever. And then you want to reset it back to the default behavior, then you can use the sticky class. Let's say, for example, so I'll create a new element. A relative container and inside this I'll add a absolute element let's see the output so this is how it looks let's change the text color to white so we have the relative container and inside we have this absolute element Let's add background to this. And now we will add a hover state and then we will add static to this. So what we are specifying is by default this would be absolute position. But when we hover on this element it becomes static means it would just be in the normal position. So this is absolute and when you hover it. You see it becomes static means this is how it looks normally if we don't use absolute or static by default let's remove the absolute position here and save it and now you can see this is the default position of absolute in general so when you want a particular element to follow the absolute position but on hover you want static position then you would use the static otherwise it's the default one and you don't need to explicitly mention it and that's an overview of the different positioning utilities in Delvin CSS. While you might not use all of them daily, they are incredibly useful for those critical situations when you need precise control over your layout.
in our next video we will explore overflow utilities that is how to manage content that extends beyond its container and how to handle it effectively see you in the next video